Good evening. On behalf of the Gujral family, I extend a very warm welcome to the Honorable Sri Pranam Mukherjee, former President of India. Thank you, sir, very much for being with us. Dr. Hamid Ansari, the former Vice President, also with us, as also Dr. Manmohan Singh, former Prime Minister, Sri Subramaniam Jayashankar, the External Affairs Minister, Dr. Karan Singh, uh, the former Union Minister. They're all with us uh, this evening. This evening, we commemorate a 100th birth anniversary of Mr. Indra Kumar Gujral, India's 12th Prime Minister. Mr. Gujral was born in Jhelum, now in Pakistan, to the freedom fighters Ain Gujral and Pushpa Gujral. He was a freedom fighter, as many of us know, and along with his parents, courted arrest during the Quit India movement. He was jailed at the age of just 22. After partition, I.K. Gujral entered active politics. He entered public life in Delhi. He was in the Rajya Sabha in 1964. He became a, a minister in Mrs. Gandhi's cabinet in 1967. He was a minister uh, for several years, a post he held, in fact, till 1975, after which he was appointed as our ambassador uh, to the USSR. He served as India's external affairs minister on two occasions, in 1989 and then again in 1996. In 1997, he was elected our 12th Prime Minister. Now, he's known by political leaders and so many across this country um, as a gentleman politician, somebody who's had an incredible appeal to political leaders and so many across party lines. I think in many senses that is how uh, we remember him most. He's also remembered for the Gujral Doctrine, a doctrine uh, which he worked on very, very closely in trying to get relationships, the tie between India and Pakistan onto a steady keel, and there's a lot which has been written on whether or not that was actually possible by the end of the day. Uh, but there's also another side to uh, Indra Kumar Gujral, which uh, perhaps a lot of us are not as aware of. Uh, he belonged to a generation, for example, of migrants to Delhi in the wake of the partition. Uh, a lot of people who were invested in the process of defining what this city has come to become, um, a city which uh, they believe should be dynamic, they believe should be cosmopolitan, that there needs to be a spirit and commitment to justice uh, and to equality. He was also part of the NDMC, the New Delhi Municipal Corporation. He was actually responsible, and this uh, is very, very interesting, he was responsible for naming many of the streets in the diplomatic enclave, uh, which he did by invoking the political principles of uh, Ashoka. So Satya Marg, Niti Marg, Kautilya Mark, they survive even today. He was a connoisseur of Urdu poetry as well. He had very close friends, Fez Ahmed Fez, uh, Sahir Ludhyanvi, Kefi Azmi, and Amrita Pritam. He regularly attended Musharras uh, across the city. He was also committed very deeply to the arts, uh, not just in Delhi, but across India. But when it comes to the city of Delhi, he had a very big role. Um, he supported a number of institutions. He provided a home, for example, to the Akshara Theater. He was also a co-founder of the Delhi Arts Theater. It was also during his tenure as Minister for Information and Broadcasting where he was responsible for, for beginning, for instituting Yuva Vani, a regular show on All India Radio. Generations grew up with this. Uh, that gave a voice to young people from the late 1960s onwards. Even here at the India International Center, he was a regular. Uh, he would often speak to, to anyone and everybody who wanted to, to reach out to him to get his views on, on any issue. He was an exceptionally learned man. Uh, he was an active member of the Saturday Club, which has defined uh, IIC in so many ways, a uh, regular discussion group for intellectuals, politicians, and those involved in public policy. He lives on through all of his uh, accomplishments uh, in our hearts and in our minds. So that's what uh, we are doing this evening. We are honoring, uh, we are honoring Indra Kumar Gujral this evening. We have a wonderful, wonderful panel. Can I now call upon Dr. Karan Singh, former Union Minister and a longtime friend uh, of Mr. Gujral, to speak about his association uh, with I.K. Gujral? Come, sir. Shri Prabhu Mukherjee, Dr. Manmohan Singh Ji, my good friend Dr. Hamid Ansari Ji, 
under whose chairmanship we flourished for several years in the Raj Sabha. She is Subramaniam Jay Shankar, and very distinguished members of the audience and old friends of ours, of mine, and of Inders. It is such a pleasure to be able to pay tribute today to a really very fine and unusual human being with whom I was in touch for many years. When I started building my house in Kautilya Marg, next to Kautilya Marg in Nyaya Marg, Ramesh Thapar used to live in Kautilya Marg. And that was a place where many people used to gather in the evenings for political uh, gossip and political analysis. And that was where I first met him. And from our very first meeting, we became very good friends and remained as such until, uh, until the very end. Uh, he was, uh, uh, Ramesh, of course, was a uh, uh, very voluble critic of the government, always, whatever government they may have been. But uh, uh, Inder was there, and we, we, we used to talk about politics and about uh, people and about poetry and so on. It was such a pleasure for him. And Shieldi, Shieldi was also, she was a poet herself, a poetess. Uh, people don't remember the fact that she was also quite a distinguished uh, poet. And in, uh, when I joined uh, Mrs. Gandhi's cabinet, uh, as a cabinet minister in 1967, Inder was a, was a minister of state. And so, sir, was Sri Pranam Mukherjee. He was also a minister of state at that time. And we go back to 1967. And then Inder and I worked together for many years. And uh, uh, we saw the, uh, the entire gamut of, of Indira Gandhi's uh, prime ministership. We saw the triumph of Bangladesh and the tragedy of the emergency both the higher point and the low point of that extraordinary period in our history. And I must tell you that in, in, in 19, by 1976, Inder refused to be browbeaten by, by Sanjay. He just did not accept it. And one day he told Sanjay, look, I know your mother for a very long time from before you were born, and I'm not going to put up with this sort of rude behavior. And he offered his resignation, at which point, he was then appointed as ambassador to the Soviet Union, the then Soviet Union, uh, where he stayed for many years. And then, of course, as has been mentioned, he re-entered politics and, and he became an external affairs minister in various ministries, including VP Singh's ministry when I was ambassador to the United States and uh, the Deva Gauda ministry. And finally, he became uh, prime minister. It's quite amazing that two refugees from... Pakistan, Dr. Manmohan Singh Ji and Indra Gujar became prime ministers of India. Whereas the Mujahirs who went from here, the Mujahirs who went from here to Pakistan are still not accepted. They want to come back. And the two refugees who came from there, from their efforts, 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 it's a very big thing. So, they were very shocked. Indra Ji was very fond of poetry. बहुत बहुत बढ़िया आदमी थे वो उनसे जफ्फी मारना उनसे बात करना और मुझे बहुत चाहते थे वो और हमेशा मुझे और मेरी पत्नी को वो और शील जी हम चारों जने कई बार मिलते थे तो मैं इस अवसर पर उनको भावभीनी श्रद्धांजलि अर्पित करता हूँ श्री प्रणब मुखर्जी जी श्री हमीद अंसारी जी डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह जी डॉक्टर करण सिंह जी लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन फ्रेंड्स and if I were to make really the most personal point about Mr. Gujral, it was how, in a sense, how caring he was, how, you know, he knew everybody, he kept his eyes and ears open, he was a, you know, he was an extraordinarily courteous man. And uh, uh, Dr. Karan Singh spoke about the Saturday Club. He, in a sense, had a Saturday club in his embassy, that uh, there was actually the officers' meetings of the embassies was very open. He was deliberately non-hierarchical. He would insist that the, the younger people spoke first because he understood that in a bureaucracy, uh, you sort of, uh, if you got the signal very early, then you may hold your peace. Now, I arrived in Moscow actually at a time when he had already spent about three years uh, there. He had settled in. Uh, various things had happened. Now, 
the, the most important point I want to make about that period is he served about five years in Moscow and he served four governments in those five years. He was sent by the Indira Gandhi government, he served the Janta government, he served the Charan Singh government and he served the Indira Gandhi government back then again. And I emphasize this because today, you know, India, Indo-Russian and looking back, Indo-Soviet relations looks very stable. You know, it was, they were our best friends, we were their best friends, everybody knew that, it was self-evident. It was not at that point of time. In fact, having spent time with him, you know, you, you could actually, I was still at that period when the anxieties in that relationship were playing out. I mean, and the fact that we, the Soviet slash Russia, went through multiple changes of government on the Indian side, and we also then, a decade later, saw the changes in Soviet Union and Russia. I think that has given today the relationship the durability, which I believe is its very unique quality. I mean, if you look at Indian foreign policy over 70 years, a lot of things have changed. India-Russia relations are probably what has changed least. Uh, and to my mind, that's an, actually an exceptional uh, relationship because if you, in the, in the history of the world in that period, you don't see that kind of steadiness. And to my mind, if there is, you know, a professional sort of uh, 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 admiration that I would express particularly for uh, Mr. Gujral, it is the fact that his stewardship actually stabilized that relationship when it had a potential for volatility uh, at that point, and a lot of his memoirs are actually uh, devoted uh, to that. Respected Shri Pranav Mukherjee, dear friend Shri Hamid Ansari ji, Foreign Minister Jai Shankar ji, and my dear friend Dr. Karan Singh ji, I deem it an honor to be invited to speak at this function which seeks to commemorate the 100th birthday of Sri Indra Kumar Gujral. What I want to talk about Gujralji is an aspect of his life which does, has not received the attention that it deserves. That is his concern for what was happening in Punjab when the terrorist had a field day. Gujaralji was deeply worried about the rise of terrorism and anybody who met him, he took the opportunity to convey to him how important it was for the country to deal with the terrorist elements in Punjab with a degree of understanding concern, and of course, firmness. And when the sad event of 1984 took place, Gujaralji, on that very sad evening, he went to the then Home Minister, Shri P. V. Narsim Rao, and said to him that the situation is so grave that it is necessary for the government to call the army at the earliest. If that advice had been heeded, perhaps the massacre that took place in 1984 could have been avoided. And subsequently, my relationship with Gujaralji grew, and he always used to remind me of our old links with West Punjab, and particularly the goings on in Jhelum and surrounding areas. I do not want to talk much about the government, but Gujaralji asked me once, he when he was external affairs minister, and he repeated that request when he became the prime minister what would I, should I do as, as Prime Minister? And I said to him, sir, 
the best thing that you can do for our country and for me is that you should not tank, you should not reverse the poly economic policies that Nasibra government had introduced from 91 to 96. And true to this word that he gave me, the United Front part government did not reverse any of the economic policies that were set in motion by Narsim Rao's government. And I often say to many people who come from abroad that 25 years since 91 have passed. In all these 25 years, there have been many changes of government, but as far as the economic policy is concerned, the direction of policies has remained broadly the same. And that is a tribute to Gujaralji. I did not know Gujaral Sahib at all. I first met him in Moscow in October 1980 when the then president of the republic uh, Sri Sanjeeva Reddy paid a state visit to the Soviet Union. I was a lowly creature looking after protocol arrangements in the Ministry of External Affairs. We decided we'll go through with the Moscow University part of the program. Mr. Yuli Vorontsov used to be the Soviet ambassador in Delhi, as good and as professional as he could be. So while the university proceedings took place, he and Ambassador Gujral and a few of us were outside the auditorium discussing. And Mr. Vorontsov kept insisting that there must be a misunderstanding and that it will all be cleared up. So we went back to the Kremlin. And then the Soviet deputy foreign minister came to call. And he used a delightful expression. I've never forgotten it. He said, for valid and objective reasons, our president is not in a position to understand, and our Indian friends, uh, our president is not in a position to attend, and our Indian friends must understand. So Mr. N. Krishnan, who was the senior person from the EMEA team, said, Comrade Firubin, I am trying very hard to understand. Can you please assist me? And Mr. Firubin said, my instructions are to convey, not to discuss. So that was a dead end. I knew Guzralji from 1969. When I entered into parliament, he was minister. He was also member of Raj Sabha. And up to 70, 1976, we were together in the same party belonging to Indian National Congress. Thereafter, we parted politically because when Janta Party was formed in the post-emergency period, I stuck to Congress, but he joined Janta Party. When Gujral Sahib became Prime Minister, I remember an observation made by a very important Delhi newspaper published from Delhi and Bombay made a comment that somebody says he has no constituency, but he has a constituency. His constituency is the intellect and sensible people 
of India. He was closely associated <coughs> with various intellectual activities. And in his speech in parliament, both in Lok Sabha and Dutch Sabha, got reflected in it. In one way, he was one of the scholarly prime ministers we had. In fact, I was, he was the first minister I came to know of the Union government because it was on a very first occasion we met in a social event. Then it was very much hotly debated bank nationalization. He asked me that young member, what is your feeling about it? I said, of course I support bank nationalization and I do not subscribe to the theory of proprietary right has been violated. As I essentially believe, no right is fundamental or sacrosanct. And the days of King John and Magna Carta has gone when it was stated that three rights are inalienable, right to property, right to liberty, right to life. Proprietary right is not that sacrosanct as right to liberty. Dr. Manmohan Singh has referred to Gujral doctrine. Unfortunately, he did not have a very long time as foreign minister or as prime minister. His prime ministership was just of one year. I pay my respectful homage to this great son of India on his centenary year. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.